All right, so for the longest time, I've always tell, told people, that, hey, I've been a hardcore Windows user for 20 years, and I've gamed on Windows for a long time, and I love gaming in Linux when I can, but there are certain games that just you can't. Fortnite, PUBG, uh, the new Call of Duty game with the War Warfront, and, and some other things that uh, or War Warzone. Sorry, yeah. Uh, anyways, the whole point of this is I want to play all these games, but I don't really want to leave my Linux system. I don't want to do. Uh, a dual boot type scenario, which I've done in the past. I don't want to do a PCI pass through and throw two different graphics cards and launch a Windows VM. It's overly complex and, and really technical where most people just sometimes have hardware limitations where they can't do that. So I wanted them to do this video. This is what I find to be the best solution for everything to where I can play on my Linux desktop. I can play it inside my house on my TV if I want with a controller. It doesn't matter as my Windows box I set up, that minimal Windows uh, ISO I talked about on Monday. Well, I implemented that, and I've been just kind of building this gaming machine, and that's all this Windows box does. doesn't even do updates. I, I literally have stripped this thing down to the nuts and bolts to where I just game on it, and that's it. And... I don't even have a monitor or keyboard hooked up to this machine anymore. I literally just control it all through remote desktop. Um, when I need to, I, I do have a VNC so I can get in through the headless uh, type scenario. But most cases, I don't even need it. I can just run my uh, game stream. And then once I'm done, I just quit out of the game and it just sits there. That's it. Pretty awesome. So with all that, let's first jump onto that minimal desktop. We'll go ahead and VNC in. I'll kind of show you some of the setup through game streaming. But then I want to get to the Moonlight project on the Linux box. And I say the Linux box, but this can be anything. You could actually put Moonlight on like a retro pie. So you have your legacy games, but you also have it on there to where you can put it on your main TV inside and then also play those awesome games on a pie, which is kind of insane. And uh, I was so impressed by this technology and impressed by that project that I went ahead and uh, bought, you know, a, a, an Android box specifically for inside. So enough talking, let's get into this, unpack what's going on, which might come as a shock as I'm gonna show some NVIDIA stuff now. Uh, an NVIDIA card's gonna run this Windows PC and I'm putting game streaming on and then connecting to it. So let's do it. All right, let's start this guy out with getting on our game stream PC. I have two connections here. So I added a tight VNC server so I can directly get it uh, from an actual as if I'm at the keyboard. And then also an RDP. The reason why we have the VNC and the RDP connection, one for redundancy, but two, I like to have that right in front of it uh, look and feel. So obviously if this had out of band remote access, that would probably be my preference. But since this PC doesn't, I just went with VNC. So we're gonna connect with VNC. It does look ugly. It's 8-bit as we're setting it up. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. If you do RDP in, you will not see a lot of the game stream stuff. So when I'm in here, you have to install NVIDIA GeForce Experience. And from here, you would actually have your games. Now you're going to see the game line, line up and you go, yeah, that makes perfect sense because none of these games play for anything on Linux. Uh, I don't know, maybe Division 2 does now. But most of them, I mean, honestly, is just kind of a... a not no no chance of actually working because the publisher themselves kind of went out of their way to make sure it doesn't play on Linux. So if I go into settings under shield, uh, this is the game stream. Now normally you just tick this on and you're done, but there's certain games that they block during the game stream, like Dauntless, and then also the new Modern Warfare uh, Warzone uh, is not on there. So I went ahead and added to those, and if we go edit, you can see all I did was specify the launcher and then I'll just name it. I could put some box art, kind of pretty this up a little bit, but that's pretty much it for the actual PC setup. You just tick this on, you add any external games that aren't part of the game streaming service, but I only had two that just didn't show up. So uh, the rest of them just showed up naturally. So with that, we'll close out of this. Um, the actual PC itself, how did I set it up? It, obviously, I always go into gpedit.msc, uh, for updates, a lot of people are like, well, doesn't it just revert back? And the answer to that is not really how I have it set up. 
So if you go into Windows Components, come all the way down to Windows Update, um, click the little tidly, and then come into Windows Update for Business. This is where you'd set your update. And the preview build and feature updates are the biggest thing. After a minimal install, uh, this can really mess you up if you get at that. So I always put it to at least semi-annual channel, but you could actually put it down here even more and it would not update at all. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on here, but I also put 365, which is the max. So this should be good for a couple years. Uh, next year sometime, I might come back in here and see if they've updated the GPO. And if they can't, if they did, I would take this policy object and go ahead and put it on one of these older ones and say, hey, make it old, old channel to where it doesn't update the actual feature update. So very neat way of doing it. And then for quality updates, I still update the system for security purposes, but I don't necessarily have to. And then obviously I just did O and O shut up, which I've done in a lot of videos uh, where I just go through and check everything and just kind of leave it alone or, or most things. I, I do leave camera and some other options open so I could use that for like a headset to communicate in games. So with that, we'll close out of the Windows PC because it's pretty minimal and I haven't really done anything other than install a bunch of games and put game streaming on with my NVIDIA card. Now this is a 960. Um, we'll go ahead and launch into Warzone as that'll just launch the launcher and you'll get a little bit better look and feel. For the Linux side of things, I did install Moonlight um, and I'm gonna show the Moonlight project real fast. So the Moonlight project runs on Moonlight Dash QT is the, the latest and greatest. And that is Windows, Mac, Linux, and Steam Link. So if you still have like one of those old Steam Links that Steam used to sell, you can actually put this on a thumb drive and boot directly to uh, this without actually going out and buying, let's say an Nvidia Shield, which is what Nvidia wants you to do. But using this project, you can pretty much just go, jump on here and utilize all of this, which is fantastic. I love the fact you can just do this. Now for the downloads, you have snaps, you have flat packs, you have all these different downloads. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit flat packs just so you can see that. If you have flat pack installed, you can just hit install here or you can do it from a command line. Um, I've gone a whole video over flat packs. So if you don't understand flat packs at all and you want to install it, I do recommend if you're on Linux desktop to install Moonlight under the terminal and using flat pack. So if you don't know how to use flat packs, I'll refer to that video as well. So uh, that'll help you out. So with that said, that's how I've installed Moonlight. Um, it's just a flat pack, which is just literally flat pack install uh, this com.moonlight underscore steam, which I'll give you the exact command real fast, just so you have it install. And I'll just auto complete that uh, flat hub space com dot this whole line. This whole line right here will get you installed. So if I hit enter for this, it'll find it. It says, hey, it's already installed and it's done. So, but this is how you would install it. It doesn't need any dependencies or any of that crazy Linuxy stuff. Anybody can do this with flat pack. So I just want to show that. But with that, let's launch into Moonlight and we'll just go Moonlight. And uh, it says hardware acceleration. The video decoder is not detected by Moonlight. I was trying to clear this up. I might do a update video after this, but I wasn't able to. I did notice that I was using the Mesa ACO drivers on this one. Um, so that might have something to do with it. So I might end up removing those and reverting back to the stock settings. But if we go into game stream, I've already authenticated this PC using the game stream and the Moonlight project, as you see here. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare, so uh, let's uh, jump into game here and uh, play some Modern Warfare. I'll show you how easy this startup. I'll just keep talking through the startup here just so you can kind of see it launch. Now, if you do Fallout and those types of things, it will launch directly into game. You won't see the desktop like this, but since I manually added just the launcher to launch into it, you still have to hit play. But past that, that's all you need to do. All right, so I'm on the main screen here. I'm gonna go ahead and just go through here with Warzone. Um, let's play a quick map. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through most of this as uh, maybe, maybe actually let's just do practice mode just so I don't waste all of this. So um, just do battle royale practice. So 
This is a quad core, so it's an actual Ryzen chip. I think the Ryzen 3 and it has integrated graphics. I'm not using the integrated graphics as I am using an Nvidia card. I am using the Nvidia 960 though. So the 960, not a great card, pretty budget card three years ago. So this by all means is a budget build uh, where I just kind of put a bunch of leftover electronics and kind of built this up as a proof of concept. If I was a hardcore gamer, I would probably go ahead and uh, build like a legit gaming rig for this. Uh, but since I'm more of a casual, uh, definitely I'm a filthy casual, uh, we're just gonna do it this way. Alright, so a couple things here is you'll notice the jagged edges and stuff. This is about 1080p. If frame rates are pretty decent here. Um, I will probably redo this video and just show the actual performance. But I, I find 1080 just fine. But if you needed faster frame rates, let's say 120 or something like that, you totally can. I don't particularly like that. So um, I'd rather have a little bit sharper image. So I'm using 1080, but you can actually downgrade this to 720. If you have connection issues, it will help a lot. So. Grab some armor plates. Taking fire. All right, sweet. Well, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and quit to desktop. Now, one cool thing I want to show you real fast is I'm still in Linux, so I can still go through all of this stuff, flip through all my stuff, and then come right back into here. So very neat that I can just quit out whenever I want. And that's still running in the background, so what I can do is just kill it. Just hit the X, and this actually goes through, kills that actual process. All right, that's game streaming in a nutshell. I had just a blast making this video. I'm probably going to be making more gaming content and stuff, uh, specifically over this type of thing, because I find it very freeing to be able to use whatever I want to use, whether that's Windows, whether it's Linux, whether it's Mac, it doesn't matter now. I can play any game I want and not have to worry about it. Now, most people are saying, hey, what about that Windows box? Don't you have to maintain it? For the most part, it's gonna be good for a couple years until it, that feature update kind of goes out of flavor. So I'm using 1909, so it should be good for probably three years. And then after three years, I'm gonna have to revamp it. And at that time, honestly, I'll probably rebuild the whole PC and do like a new graphics card because this thing's kind of dated as you saw. So with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.